Hey, it's Chris, Legion of Games. Moonrakers, shooting for the stars. Base game, mini expansion, already out there. What do you need to know about the new stuff? Nomad, Overload, and Binding Ties. All three new expansions, hands-on. What are the differences? How do I rank them? How do I feel about them? What do they add differently? How do they change the game that you may be familiar with? If you were looking at it, is this worth it? If you already have it, is this going to add something? Or if you're somewhere in between, is this going to change your mind on the game as a whole to begin with? Let's do this short and sweet. Let's go. Now, Moonrakers as a whole is a very interesting spin on the deck building genre in space where you are not only combing through your deck, trying to make it the most efficient, but you're also building your spaceship piece by piece, hiring crews, trying to achieve missions to get victory conditions and bonuses all in the first place. And the very divisive element of this game, which sets it apart from a lot of other deck builders in the first place, is the semi-cooperative nature. And a lot of you are going to cringe when you hear those words come out of my mouth, semi cooperative in the sense that you have these quests, you have these missions, if you will, you are going to potentially have to be divisive or decisive on how you're going to allocate the rewards on these missions if you are going to lure or attract people in order to help you achieve them in the first place because you may not be able to do them without some assistance. And that mechanic has sort of either been a turn on or a turn off depending on how you fall on that. Now, how does that, along with some of the other pluses and minuses of Moonrakers as a whole, in terms of the uniqueness, the theme, the incorporation, the prestige track, the solo element as a deck builder, how does that tie in to the three new expansions that are going to be coming to crowdfunding? So let's talk about this for a second. Let's break this down, give you a little bit of an overview of all three, give you the pros, give you the cons, give you the what are you looking for, what do you need in terms of if you are really seriously looking at this. Let's do this. Now we're going to start a little bit out of order and we're going to start with overload actually because it's the most straightforward of all of them to explain and to understand. Now with overload, I mean just like the name would suggest, you're getting more of a good thing. You are getting more cards, more events, more missions, more allies, crew members to recruit, right? Simple, straightforward, but not without a twist or a few differences as well. Those contracts that I mentioned, now you can actually go head to head, meaning people can challenge you on one of these missions as a contract, meaning whoever of the two of you separately, now this is the one big difference here, separately, instead of combining to get the rewards, whoever gets the most, don't even have to get them all, but if you get more than your opponent, you're gonna get the first place rewards, and then they're gonna get the second place rewards, and so on and so forth. So that's a new dynamic element. The other element that's gonna go along with this are the advanced action cards, because the biggest limitation in this, and well, the biggest frustration with the base game is if you just don't have the blue action cards to be able able to play more actions. Yeah, that's right. This is a deck builder that does not allow you to just play ad nauseum your whole hand. And that is the greatest difference of this and all the other deck builders out there. You have to be very limited because you have to play a card to get in order to be able to play more cards which are your action mechanism cards. And almost all of the new advanced actions are giving you extra actions plus something else, or just more actions in general, like a plus three action, if you will. And so that is the other major big difference. The other big difference is Iospheres, which are essentially a recruit or play an action, put a certain number of tokens on a card, and it stays out there until all the tokens are used up. The last element that is different, the element that is also very unique in this sense, and this is addressing with all three expansions, the biggest problem with uh, deck builders in general, right, is if you get a bad market. If you get a bad market, it's a real pain, and you suffer, everyone suffers, the game slows down, it becomes a slog, everyone kind of gets disinterested. Well, it's eliminating the rule where you have to pay a coin to discard a card from the market. You can just get the first one out of there for free refreshing the market much quicker, much easier, and on a turn-by-turn -turn basis so you don't develop that 
stick in the mud sort of situation that can slow down and be a detriment to any type of game using this main mechanism. And that is overload in a nutshell. So if you're looking for just more of a good thing with a little bit slight difference in the contracts, that's going to be by far and away the most straightforward one from that aspect. Now, let's talk about binding ties as the next one up. This is actually the one that's labeled the first major expansion, but I'm talking about it second because it's a little bit different and it's a little bit more complex in that sense. You have these new faction boards, right? And these are going to take into account your allegiance or your affiliation or your friendliness with the other factions. And you're going to be tracking all of those factions because this is going to entice you, as I mentioned, the big detriment of the core box for a lot of people is that I don't really want to compete or, you know, ally with other people to help them achieve an objective. Well, now, anytime you ally with someone, you get to move up along these tracks. And as you go up along these tracks, you can spend them again to go back down in order to get the achievement that you're at in the spot you're at or past. And so that's the big mechanism here with this board. And just like with all of the other expansions, you're getting more ship cards, you're getting more allies, you're getting more contracts, you're getting more action cards. So there's a little bit of that, but the main factor on this is trying to address the criticism of the base game as a whole of, I don't really want to partner with people. And so this game isn't for me. Well, this is the one that's going to potentially incentivize you to do it because every time you partner, you're going to gain a reputation point and you have things on here, including gaining prestige, which are the victory points, getting money, getting rid of contracts, drawing secret objectives, uh, getting rid of requirements that are necessary on said contracts. So there's a lot of stuff mitigating a hazard altogether. That's something that's in here. And then mitigating a hazard thing is really going to come important here in a second as we talk about the third expansion, the third expansion being Nomad. Because the third expansion actually allows and puts in a rule there where you can say, you know what? I don't like rolling the hazard dice because that's the other thing that a lot of people don't like in the randomness of some of these games. I don't like the randomness. So what I'm going to do is I can just set the hazard to be one on every single mission or contract. And so how do you feel about that? Knowing that's a little bit of an optional rule again, to go along with the refreshing of the market now for free on the first card that speeds things up, that entices people uh, that, had that as some of their main criticisms of this deck builder. They're addressing three big ones there in a very short span. Last up, we have Nomads, which is going in a familiar direction as we've seen several of these concepts used in other games. The first thing is an adjacency. You know, those contracts that I just mentioned that you have to ally with? Well, maybe I don't want to ally with you. Maybe I want to be very selective. Now you have to be in an adjacent quadrant and adjacent sectors in order to be able to do those missions. And what spacefaring game would not be complete by having a secret one, an anomaly, where you can unlock special prototype parts for your ship that are going to be even more of a benefit than the other ones out there in the first place. And it wouldn't be complete, a la if you're familiar with Quacks of Quendlinburg or even say Dead of Winter. You are going to be drawing events or policy cards at the beginning of every person's turn that are going to potentially shape or change the setup, the rules, or the dynamics on a turn-by-turn -turn basis. Boons, consequences, and everything else between that not only may just take effect, but you also have the old Roman thumb up or thumb down in order to figure out whether or not you guys want to enact it in the first place. So a little bit of everything, but adding more of a dynamic push and pull instead of the staticness of the game in the first place, so now that you've heard the overview of all three of these expansions, how do I feel about them? What do I feel about them? Where do I rank them? What do I think of them in terms of what they're adding? I did them in that order for somewhat of an important reason, but also somewhat of just randomness because that's the way I do things. I think Overload by far and away is my favorite because of this, the addition of everything else that goes along with it. I am not unlike you guys where I say my biggest criticism of this is I don't really want to partner with other people. And so the fact that they've addressed this in a relatively straightforward manner is encouraging. Now, I feel a little bit mixed about some of the uh, expansions when it comes to Nomad and Binding Ties. Binding Ties, for example, with that prestige track, it takes some getting used to. And I'm not really sure how I feel about it yet. Because like I said, as you go up the track, right? It's not you 
get to this spot and you automatically get this bonus and then you get to the next spot and then you get this bonus. No, it's you get to that spot and then at some point you can spend your allegiance essentially to go back down to having no allegiance with them to get one or multiple. Like if you go from five to four and then, you know, it's spending one and then you can go four to zero to get the four benefits. So you get the one benefit and the four benefit, even though you're at the five. So it's different in that sense. It's just, I don't know. It makes me wonder if they tested it both ways and then they decided to go this way because maybe the other way is too powerful and you're gonna get too many bonuses. Similarly, uh, with Nomad here, I really prefer uh, the Nomad side of things where you're getting into the event cards on a turn by turn basis. That is the highlight of Quacks of a little bit more tactical nature because I prefer tactical rather than purely strategic. And that adds up round after round if you're having to be more on your toes. That in combination with the advanced parts of overload, that's what I really like to see because the other big limitation is just the actions. I mean, that is the most frustrating thing. If you don't have enough actions to do anything or to do as much or nearly as much as you want on a turn by turn basis, it's a unique mechanic but it's also uniquely equally frustrating at times if you don't have enough of those. So to have those combined with other actions helps mitigate that. Now you're gonna have to go after those pretty intensively in order to get them, but it's going to pay off. The adjacency in the Nomad, I, again, I have mixed feelings on the adjacency side of things because uh, I prefer the head-to-head -head contracts where I almost wish they had gone strongly just fully into that realm of things and said, yeah, we're just gonna do head to head, you guys first and second, because then that's gonna entice people to interact more, that's going to entice people to play more, it's going to be more of a direct interaction as opposed to people always complaining about, well, there's not enough interaction. Well, it's indirect versus direct. I mean, this would be uh, more of a direct in that sense. So it's a little bit uh, enticing. And if you wanted one versus the other, one of the expansions would entice you to play a certain way. Overload's going to entice you to do more head to head. Binding Ties is going to entice you to actually cooperate. Nomad is going to sort of do a mix because where you have to be adjacency wise on the map board in the first place to do contracts with other people. So even if you want to, if you can't get there, it may not matter. So that is our overview, my thoughts on the three expansions right now for Moonrakers. I still think as, as a final, final impression here, this is probably the only deck builder that I have played that I would recommend playing it truly solo because it plays completely differently truly solo than it does with uh you know a higher player count in terms of the contracts and the interactions and so if you do not like the trying to play semi-co-op you can play this one solo truly solo not like aeon's end that i played you know six or seven games of this weekend as two-handed solo no true solo and there are not many deck builders that actually offer you a full experience with that and this is one of the few ones two of the three expansions are easily compatible with the solo the third one really you need three essentially uh, i think that's nomads if i'm remembering correctly i could be wrong but um that is my thought now so at the end if you did not like the base game some of these changes the refreshing of the market easier the changing of how the contracts are going to work either in allied or head-to-head -head, you know those are the criticisms that they have addressed if you did not like the action system they're giving you more opportunity with the overload at the same time in order to get those changes, you're going to have to have the base game and the expansions. And is that going to be too pricey for you, all things considered? Because it's not going to be cheap either at the same time. Overall, at the end here, I think the other concern that still remains to be seen, as it says, you can play with all three expansions, but I worry about length of time because that's the other thing at a higher player count, this is going to be one of the lengthier deck building games that you have in your collection by far because of the individual turn by turn nature, the planning that's going to need to go into it, and now the adjacency and the contracts and the negotiation, that may not get any shorter, it may get slightly improved, but it's still not going to change the length of the game, which is probably the other biggest criticism that I could see people having concerns about. 
where other games are just going to be shorter by the nature of the turn by turn. I play everything in my hand and less strategic planning, more like that. So there you go. That is my thoughts on the three new expansions from Moonrakers, the new Kickstarter involving Titan. I didn't even talk about the online cooperative aspect of things, so you can check that out as well. But there you go. Those are my thoughts. Uh, thank you, IV Games, for sending me this so I could talk to you guys about it. There you go. As always, stay classy. If you like this, uh, throw me a sub, throw me a thumb, and let me know down below if you have any questions, thoughts, or concerns. Thanks for watching. See you around.